start with HPs. Okay. So HBase is uh, basically a type of a NoSQL database or a data store. It is unlike a structured data store like RDBMSS. Um, what is unstructured and what are the properties we'll see later. But I, I guess we all have a basic understanding of what a NoSQL data store is. So some keywords associated with HBase uh, all over are open source. So it is written in Java and it is open source. It is non-relational, so it doesn't conform to all the asset properties um, and the relational database structure. It is distributed. It is built over SDFS, and the entire intention of building is basis to have a distributed data store. So when we say distributed, it means it's replicated. So if like data is, uh, if nodes are failing and you know uh, there are failures found to happen in a distributed system, HBase will not let you suffer. So it has all the properties of your fault tolerance and um, other things associated with the distributed data store. It is versioned, so every piece of data is versioned with a default timestamp or an automatic timestamp generated by HBase installed. So if you have a record now, you have a record later, update it. Uh, both the pieces are maintained with uh, versioning. This is has version control in it. It is column oriented, so what we mean by column oriented is like it has it can have as many number of columns as you can and each column but has to belong to a column family basically. So we'll see those things with examples will become clearer. It is modeled after Google's big table paper uh, in 2004 and big table is already big table uses Google file system underneath like HBase use, uses HDFS underneath. It is scalable. The goal is to have Billions of rows into millions of columns, uh, which is very unlike RDBMSS. Uh, some other keywords like distributed is covered. It is multi-dimensional. So multi-dimensional means like we have a multi-dimensional array. So we, we can have basically data within data. So we'll see those examples. It is a sorted map. So when when we say a map, any NoSQL system or most of the column-based NoSQL systems store data as key-value pairs. A map is a key-value store. So we are calling HBase a data store. Of of maps basically and sorted means sorted by key so what it means is uh, all the keys are sorted together sorted and you know stored accordingly uh, so they are sorted in alphabetical order basically mm -hmm. we'll have a look at an example sparse means uh, some column families will have some columns but other column families may not have some columns so it's not necessary that everything will have every field. Basically, that's what sparse means. So the data is very, you know, uh, at a lot of time there is no data basically associated with a lot of things. But HBase is fine with it. Um, label table of rows and sorted rows. Uh, rows are key value cells. Alphabetical order layered over HDFS. Right? Um, one good thing about HBase is like strictly consistent reads and writes. So when it says consistent, the consistency is up, update uh, only till your uh, row level. So all updates, row updates are atomic basically. Um, and it maintains consistency of reads and writes. So uh, that's fine. Um, how it's scalable is because it's distributed over, over HDFS. So as data grows, it automatically um, Reshard automatically reconfigures data or rebalances data between its nodes and clusters, and uh, it keeps it, uh, you know, uh, parallel and distributed. That's configurable. Also, how you can do sharding is configurable through configurable configuration files. Um, there are something called region servers. We'll come to it later, but they are like the building blocks underneath HBase. Uh, so they are like clusters which support uh, data management. So there is failover support between regions. So if one region server fails, there is support for that. Let's, let's leave it like that here. To read and write data from HBase, there is a very easy to use Java API client. Um, 
there is a thrift client also and you can also use a restful web service which supports these communication formats. Uh, you have also support for you know monitoring services. Uh, you can export monitoring metrics to Ganglia and other those systems. This is not too important, but yeah, I mean, what's happening basically the health and monitoring and everything of space is integrable with Ganglia and all that. So we'll have a look at the example. Let's not get too serious about it. Uh, the idea is this part is there is a, this black line is coming over a black surface, so it's a bit interesting, but all these arrows are pointing here. This is the consider this is the HDFS part of things. And this is the HDFS client. Basically this is your HBase blocks divided into regions. And uh, you have uh, will come back and forth to this. So basically here every table in HBase is split into roughly equal size regions. They are called regions. And each region is nothing but basically a set of rows. So each region is a shard, basically. So you say I have 1 to 100 rows and 1 to 20 could be one region, 21 to 40 could be another region and so on and so forth. So I'm giving you a very basic example. Actually it would be huge numbers. So each region is a con contiguous range of keys. Uh, when we say contiguous we mean memory wise physically stored they are contiguous next to each other. Uh, regions, they split as they grow. So as more and more data gets populated into regions, they rebalance themselves and they dynamically adjust to your data set. As I had spoken before, um, all the tables are sorted by row. So sorted by row means row key because the value can be anything. But the key which is that one field or that a set of fields or that whatever it is, is alphabetically sorted in that table. <coughs> So every uh, table schema has some predefined column family. So like when we create a table in MySQL, we predefine a set of columns and then data can be populated in those columns. Here, there is some rigidity with respect to, um, we create a table then we create column families in advance. But each of these column families can have any number of columns dynamically by the user. So that's, that's how you store unstructured data. Basically. So your data structure could be like one record could have say name, age, city, country, the other could be name, age. So you can store name, age, city, country, and so on and so forth in as, a, as one record in one column and, and, and as one record. And you can store only name, age as another uh, column value in another uh, record. But your column family has to be the same. So any column can have any number of versions, but the default is three, I guess. I not mentioned that. So, when I said versions, I mean when you write an original copy of a data, then you update it, then you update it. So each of these copies are maintained by timestamp and uh, that HBase automatically takes care of it. So we don't need to worry about it. Um, this is to say that everything except the table name, uh, so basically every data element is a byte array. It's, it's everything that can be put in a byte array can be stored in the data. So this is a structure, you have a table, so family, column, this is a column family, column and timestamp for the versioning and value. Let's not bother about let's look at an example. So this should serve as a good example. So this is a JSON representation of the data, one section of data in a certain table. So this is, our, basically this is one row. And this is another row. So this is, I mean, I've tried to just put it across that AAA is, you know, alphabetically bigger than A, so we have, you know, or alphabetically arranged basically, the records are, the rows are alphabetically arranged by row key. So this is the key, this is the column family, so this is one column family which is predefined. This column family has two columns here, foo, so this is a column name and this is a column value. This is another column name and this is another column value. Now, B is another column family, which is predefined. B has, B did not conform to what A has. So B has no column, but it has a value. So this null column could be representing something that we can assign to. 
Um, this is another record. I have again, as I said, column families are predefined and they are there. So under the A column family, you have again food and bar, and you have different meanings and words in. So this basically can help you simplify how data is stored in uh, tables and, and records. Just keep in mind that this is one record. This is another record. This is a column family. A column family basically, as the name suggests, hosts a series of columns. This thing is, although here in the example I have the same two columns, but this could have been foo, bar, x1, y1, z1, p1, and here it could just have been foo and bar, and things would have been fine. So that's not, not a problem. The only thing that has to be defined is foo, column family. Okay. So it is very similar to SDFS how data is stored. Um, here we have something called a H master and we have something called a region server. Uh, so it follows the master scale architecture. We'll go back to that slide. Um, here. So we have a region server. This is a region server. And the master is here. Basically, this is the master. So there is one master, there are multiple region servers. We'll see what are the functions of each of them uh, here. So as we know, it's based stores state in HDFS, which is there in the block diagram as well. Um, yeah, it, since HDFS provides robust data storage, HBS also makes use of those facilities. Master and region server are pretty stateless. I mean, they can be running on any machines. <coughs> So, what is a region server? So, each table can be divided into, uh, each table's data can be divided into a set of regions, and each of these regions can be assigned to a region server. So, basically, um, <coughs> one region server could be taking care of many multiple regions and so on and so forth. The H master, which is called the H base master, or which is the, the you know, the, the name node uh, counterpart of H base, basically, its duties are to take care of as my, uh, when, when the system starts from a clean install, it, it takes care of booting it up and it takes care of initially assigning uh, region servers and all that. It also takes care of handling region server problems. Uh, if a machine fails, then it will say, okay, let's move this region server is down, so let's move this region from this region server to that region server and all that. When regions become big and they split, then it will you know, rebalance. Like this is the part of rebalancing. It could, could move regions to respond to load. Can run multiple backup masters. So I'm not too sure about it, but yeah, I think there can be a backup master as well. Uh, what the master does not do is it wanted to know is like the master uh, here. It's not involved in the read and write operations. The client basically takes care of it through a configuration service called Zookeeper. So I've not mentioned too many things because it's a half minute, half an hour presentation. Zookeeper is a data configuration service and the client interacts with that to find out where to go to read data or write data. So I'll talk a bit about it in the next slide. But the master does not handle write or read requests or find requests. Basically it does pretty little most of the time. That's what some of these. So there are basically very two very basic level tables that are essential to know in HBase, which are this root and meta. So there are special catalog tables. When we say catalog, we mean meta for all practical purposes. So they maintain the current list, state, and location of all the regions. So they together basically store the entire metadata of what is stored where. So when a client has to read something, it basically comes to the root table and it finds out a list of all the meta, meta table regions. Then it goes to the respective region for which it has to uh, read the data. Then it, the meta table basically holds the list of all the user space regions. So the client will approach the route, find out, okay, you have to go to this region of the meta. It will go to that region of the meta. Now it's talking to the meta directly. It will ask the meta, okay, I want this region on the user, give me that. So now the meta will direct him to that particular region server and it can directly talk to the region server. So what the clients do is the first time is a round trip because they have to come to root, meta and all that. Next time onwards they cache it and uh, so there is a facility and you can kind of skip all of this and you can straight away directly contact the 
region server from which you have to so keep in mind that region server is nothing but the server that gives you access to the region which stores data, your relevant data, whether to read or write. So that's about root and meta. Root is at the root level, meta is second level. Mm. Okay, no. you know, the one favorite comparison, HBase versus RDBMS. There are no real indexes in uh, uh, HBase, so the rules are stored, stored sequentially. So there is no index, uh, you know, going out of memory and all that. You don't have joins in HBase, so there is no facility of joins. Most of the uh, NoSQL systems, that's a problem, so that's, that's not there. There is no such query language like SQL, like HiveQL or something. No transaction support. Uh, you don't have secondary indexes out of the box. You have to somehow manage it yourself. Uh, there is automatic partitioning, as I said. As, as your tables grow, they will split into regions and distributed across all the nodes that you can use. Scales linearly and the same things. Uh, 